Today on North Coast Digital, we follow the installation of a home network in a house under construction. In this video, we're going to see how to wire a home for the future. We want to have a high-speed connection and the flexibility for expansion in every room of this house. And because we built the house from scratch, we're going to install conduit, we're going to install data networking, and we're going to build the network and connect the computers and connect it all with the broadband via a cable modem. So we're going to be set for networking in the present and in the future. How many people typically ask you for data cabling in their homes? In the uh, six years that I've been involved in construction, I've never had one person request it. So this is the first time? This is the first time. So the next question is, having a homeowner around the site drilling holes and installing data cables, has that been a problem for you? It hasn't been a problem at all. Would you no. pretty much let it, uh, pretty much any homeowner do various things like this in their house? That's fine with me. It hasn't caused any problems. And what if somebody who wasn't capable of putting in their own data asked you for it? What would you do then? I would rely on the subcontractors for that. There's very capable contractors out there that can just about do anything a homeowner asks for. When the builder came up with the budget, he included standard telephone and cable TV to each of the rooms in the normal configuration. And there's a price for that, which I don't exactly know how much it is. But basically, I'm going to be wiring the telephone and the cable TV. I'm doing it inside a conduit. But that conduit and the data networking, that's not included. So what I really get is I get a credit for what it would have taken to wire the cable and the telephone, and we work that out at the end of the job, everything nets out, and we sort of, I walk away with a check or write a check for other things that, that are added to the house. So that's how Chuck becomes his own subcontractor. Right, right, and not every builder will let you do this. There's a lot of stuff that needs to get done between when framing is done and the drywall goes on. So all we have to do is beat the drywall. And so we're in pretty good shape because there's a lot of little things that have to be done, even though it looks like this house is almost complete and ready to drywall. There's lots of little details still left to do. And so that's going to take about probably a week and a half to two weeks before the drywall goes on. And so we can slip in here on the weekend and do a bunch of work. So what we're doing right now is we're doing the rough in for the conduit for my home. And uh, we're doing conduit because in the future, who knows what kind of wiring we're going to have. We may have uh, some wiring that has power, like fire wire or USB or something. In the short term, we're going to put uh, cable TV coax in, we're going to put telephone in, and we're going to put Cat5 um, data in. So we uh, went to our local building supply house and picked up a cart full of stuff. We'll start with the conduit that we chose. We chose this uh, flexible conduit. It uh, is quite nice, and uh, flexible is useful. Uh, the electrician uh, jokingly calls it Smurf conduit because it uh, looks a little less professional than the stiff conduit that they use. Yeah, I thought conduit was made out of, out of metal pipe. Well, there's certainly metal conduit, and there is plastic stiff conduit, and then there's this flexible plastic conduit. Uh, you have to get the... The, the problem is, is that the, lo the walls don't all line up from the, from the second floor to the first floor, and so sometimes you have to curve out just a little bit. And so this stuff, you just curve it. Whereas if you're using the plastic or the metal, you bend it. The metal you bend with these big benders to kind of curve around things. Uh, the plastic you actually heat it up and you bend it. So this, we just homeowners can just kind of like bend it and it bends around things. And as long as you don't get too aggressive, you'll be able to fish a tape. We're going to actually fish the wire through later. Okay, we're not putting the wire in until after the drywall is in. Because we just don't want to do that. We don't want to hold the drywall people up. And we might, they might get a little drywall in these boxes and we want to chip it all up and get a nice clean finish. So we have the conduit, <clears throat> we have a box. This box is a four inch by four inch box and we picked it specifically because it was very deep because we're going to put a lot of wires in here and be terminating cat five and doing all kinds of stuff in here. And we also picked it because it has a three quarter inch opening. Uh, a lot of boxes have these half inch openings which is standard for most residential but we wanted a three quarter inch conduit so we could put quite a few wires in. And what you have is a terminator, uh, a terminator that snaps onto the end of the conduit. I'll snap that one on here. You snap it on the end of the conduit like this. Oops. Like that. And it's a very, very firm thing. And then that's going to go 
just snap right into this box. It's going to okay, be Okay, now let me see how it goes into the box. Well, i got to first pop this thing out. Okay. Pop the thing out. Now you got a hole there. Got a hole. And we're not going to do this yet, but ultimately this little snap thing just snaps in. You pop it in and you're done. Nice clean finish. Nice smooth. And then all the wires run through the hole yeah. into the gun. Deck. Exactly. And, the, and the, there's no chafing. It's no, no sharp edges. You don't have any screws to put on. It's really quick. And these things are relatively inexpensive. They're under a dollar. They're like 60 or 70 cents a piece. But everything we purchased can be purchased at the local build, building supply store that was open 24 hours a day. So let's go ahead and put this box in. This is the last one we're doing on the second floor. Uh, we laid them out on the prints. And so we picked areas where we could get from the second floor to the first floor. The most important thing, <coughs> it's really important to do this in a second, a two-story house because in a one-story house you can kind of sneak around and sneak cable up after the fact, but in a two-story house you really can't do that. You can work up in the ceiling and we've got a piece of conduit that goes from the first the basement all the way up to the attic, but this way we can to any location put this easily. Now it's time to mount the box, but before we mount the box we're going to drill the hole and we drill the hole by sort of measuring back so that we center the hole right underneath the uh, box where it's going to come out of the uh, three-quarter hole box. So let's go ahead and drill the hole. Now before we did this, we made sure underneath that we had a wall that we could sneak this all into underneath. This particular one's going to be a little complex. It ends up over top of the kitchen. Make sure that uh, you didn't hit something critical underneath. So it looks good. We look like we have a hole right into the spot we uh, thought we were going to go. So now we take the box. We're going to mount that 16 inches above the floor so that it's sort of even with all the rest of the boxes in the, in the area. Okay. So now we have our box installed. We've got the uh, Terminator end already on the conduit, so I'm just going to feed the other end through. So this is right now going down into the kitchen. Now what we don't do is we don't plug this in yet. We want to be able to move this back and forth as we try to feed it through. Back, just leave a bunch like this, and so now it's time to go down into the kitchen. This is where the flexible conduit really helps. So I'm going to show it up. Here, if we were using stiff conduit or metal conduit, we'd be sitting here with fittings and whatever. Now it's important that the bends be gentle because we're going to run a fish tape up through this later to get the wire in. So this gentle bend is really nice. Now if we were making tight bends, we couldn't get a fish tape up because part of fishing the wire through is an important part of this. So we got a nice gentle bend, kind of planned that in advance. So now we pull this through. We get it all pulled in. And now, we have to go back upstairs. So basically, we've got a little bit left here, and we're going to push it in. I'm going to plug it right into here, and we're just going to give it a, a tug, and it's going to connect. Snap in. Once the conduit has been connected, the face place is added, and the box is checked to make sure that it's level. Okay, we're going to put a couple of clamps between the first floor and the second floor just to make sure it doesn't move around and if somebody pulls on it, it doesn't come out because uh, you don't want to have to put her back in. So we're just putting a couple of plastic clamps here. Okay, now we're going to put the conduit through the floor and finish this particular run. We've calculated a length, so we're going to have about 12 inches into the basement. Now we may not need 12 inches, but at least this way we can cut it off rather than extending it. So we looked at the length and now we have to connect two pieces. And what you may find is, you may be lucky enough to find this in rolls. We were only able to find it in 10 foot chunks. And 10 foot is just a few inches too short to get into the basement. So this goes on pretty easily. It's a connector, and you just have to hear it click twice, but you have to push it pretty hard. Click, click. She's in. Okay. And we'll do it on the other end. Click. Click. And that is extremely strong. Extremely strong. Okay, so now it's pretty simple. We are going to feed it into the basement. And we immediately already drilled the hole. And we know that we don't hit anything evil in the basement. 
And the last thing, let's put another clamp here. Before we do installation, uh, insulation, we're going to have to fire caulk. And fire caulk is uh, code in some locations. And basically the idea is we have to take each of the openings between <coughs> the floor, under the floor, and in the cavity, and then from the cavity to the ceiling, and we've got to seal it up. The purpose is not necessarily as much to stop the fire, but to stop the flow of air. Once the fire caulk is complete, the rough installation is done. The conduit installation team can now sit back and watch the builder add the insulation, the drywall, and start the finished process. Because we've used conduit, the final installation of the wiring can happen at any time, including after the home has been occupied. Now we're going to run some wires. We're going to go from our basement communication center up to a bedroom where we're going to terminate it. So we're going to go through the whole process step by step. So the first thing that we're going to do is we've got our wire. We're going to run three wires to each place. We're going to run a Cat5 data cable. We're going to run a Cat3 phone cable and we're going to run cable television. Now, <clears throat> a lot of people would go ahead and run two Cat5s, but the reason I've chosen to run Cat3 is it's really cheap, and because it's conduit, I can take it out any time and put more Cat5 in. People who are putting structured, structured wiring into their houses have to choose. In structured wiring, you put as much Cat5 in as you could, you never put Cat3. It also is very helpful because that way I always know that the gray wire is telephone wire. important part of this is actually the spools. If you were to go and buy just a hundred feet of wire, by the time you got done, it'd be a tangled mess, you'd throw most of it away, cutting it up. So sometimes it's worth spending fifty or so dollars. So the, these things are only fifty to eighty dollars. So fifty dollars, fifty dollars, fifty dollars gives me about a thousand feet of each of these kinds of wires. And you, as you see when I pull this, I'm going to pull all the wires at the same time because it's a lot easier as you move the ladder around to move all three wires around. So the idea is we're pulling from this central location that's close to where we're ultimately going to connect them. We're going to pull it up into the room, finish it, and then come back down here and then terminate it. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay? So I'm going to start pulling this stuff out. Okay, so I got all three wires that I'm pulling, and I'm going to pull a ladder in. And I'm not pulling all the way back to the communications area. I'm pulling where I can have a nice straight shot through the middle of the house. Then we come back, I'll run the wires back that way. So I'm kind of splitting the pull into two halves, trying to keep the wires as straight as possible, as long as possible. Now you'll notice. I've got my cable TV and my telephone and data separately. It's not critical, but I like the idea of keeping them separate to minimize interference, but you shouldn't have to do that. Now one thing while you're pulling this, especially your Cat5 data cable, you'll notice you can pull it pretty hard. This cable is designed to be pulled very hard, hundreds of pounds of force on it. But what you don't want to do is you don't want to bend the cable. You've got to be very gentle with the curves that you pull it. You can actually pull it very hard, but you can't bend it really hard, otherwise the data rates of the cable go down. Now in our house we're probably going to do 10 or 100 megabits, so it's not so critical, but it, when you do gigabit wiring you're very, very careful about the bend of the wire because you can actually cause interference in the wire if you bend it too much. I put these these are actually pipe holders that I put up here. And the idea is, this allows me to very easily thread the cable through, add new cables over time, and it provides a very smooth tray. One of the things that you want to do is you actually want to support the cable. You don't actually want to staple it if you can get away with it. It's not good to staple the cable. It just wants to lay in a tray. So you see what I could do is I could just lay this in here, pull it through, and it slides very nicely. And then I get to the next one, and I move down three feet, and I do it again, and again, and again, and again. That's how you pull the cable. Is this wire is very straight, it's not looped, and that's because it came off the roll. That's another advantage that the rolls have, is you get very straight wire off the rolls. Here we go, again, watch for the kink. Just a little tug. We're at the last point in our cable run, where we're now 
where the conduit that goes to the upstairs comes down here. It's the conduit that you actually saw us run. Now that the house is all finished, we got pipe and heating duct and everything. So what we do here is we're going to pull a bunch of cable. We have to pull two stories worth of cable and we'll leave it all looped down here because then we'll be able to fish it up through. So now it's just pull on the cable. And so we just start pulling the cable. So now we're up in the master bedroom and it's time to fish the wires through. What I have in my hand here is called a fish tape. And if you look, it says fish tape. And we're about to see exactly why it's called a fish tape. So the idea is, is you pull this out and you thread it in conduit inside the box. And then you just send it down. Now the reason you call this a fish tape, and you see just on we hold on to this handle and just unrolls. The reason we call it a fish tape, because you don't get to see what you're doing. You just kind of have to feel it and guess. A bunch of tape down, and we hope that we get down into the basement. Okay? I think we've hit something. It's kind of like fishing. So I'm betting we hit something in the basement. So let's go down and take a look in the basement and see what we hit. Okay, we're in luck. We just pushed it down the right amount. It ran into one of my cable holders. So all I gotta do is push it back a little bit. I don't know if you noticed, but upstairs I left a little bit of slack. I'm gonna pull it down. So now we have the end of the fish. Next thing we do, let's go find the end of our wires. Making very, very sure that we don't tangle anything. So now, I get the end of the wires, okay, and I'm going to loop one, the cat three, I'll just loop it through this little loop thing. The rest of them, I'm going to use the world's most magical substance, duct tape. And handy dandy duct tape cutters. And you wrap duct tape around the whole thing, and you wrap it in a way that kind of streamlines it so it can go nicely. I got kind of a point here at the top. It's going to go nicely through the cable, and you got to make sure that you, you, when you pull this, you're not going to lose it. Of course, if you lose it, you just do the whole pull again. So now I have my sort of little duct tape blob there. So I got the whole thing duct taped, and I'm just going to shove it. Because the fish tape is stiff, we can actually just shove it right back into the conduit and force the cable in a couple of feet. Okay, and now the cable is looped down here and we can go back upstairs and pull it. And all we want to do is make sure that it's nice and not tangled down here in the basement. And again, be very gentle. If it doesn't come easily, that means you've caught on something. The excitement builds, it's just like fishing. That's probably just coming up here, yep. Okay, so that probably means it's right here. Yep, so we kind of reach in, pull her out. Cable. Now we pull ourselves plenty of cable. One thing you gotta do, don't worry about wasting a little cable here and there. So now we just disconnect it from the duct tape. We're going to cut these ends off anyways. So now we have three wires. It's time to terminate these wires, put the ends on, and finish this particular one up here in the uh, master bedroom. So we're going to strip the uh, outer jacket off. Now we can't use the wire strippers because inside there's a bundle of wires. So we're just going to kind of score the plastic a little bit and then pull it off. We pulled the outer jacket off and we have a bundle of wires. They're twisted. They're called twisted pairs. Each colored pair of wires is twisted. There's an orange, a blue, brown, and a green. And there's this pull string. This pull string is why we can actually pull this pretty hard without stressing the wires. Okay, so, the, so pulling it, you're pulling the pull string and that's a, a strong, very strong piece of nylon string. But now we're simply going to cut the, the pull string off. 
Now, it's very important as we terminate this to maintain these twists, to only untwist them as much as you have to to terminate them. So we're going to terminate these with the Cat5 plug that's going to fit into our structured wiring. And it's got a little legend on it that tells us which wire goes which place. There's actually two ways of doing it, and we've chosen the top way, which will be the outside will be orange, then orange stripe, green stripe, blue stripe, blue, green, brown, brown stripe. Okay, And so we're going to do that. So the idea is we've got to take all these wires and fan them out, always checking the little legend to make sure that you're not messing it up. So now, we have them untwisted in approximately the right location. We untwist them as little as we can. The next thing we have to do is what's called punching them down. And we're going to use a punch down tool. Now in this punch down tool, it's got a little cutter. So it's both going to set the wire into these little metal teeth and it's going to cut off the excess that's hanging off on the edges. So now it's time to punch these down. So basically you can see that we've got the wire in as close as we can, untwisted as little as possible, and we've got them all punched down to the appropriate locations. So we have our three cables terminated with our modular jacks, and now we simply are going to plug them into the, our modular panel. And I'll just snap in my... We're going to shove this some of the wire back down, and again, because of the stiffness of the wire, we can do this. I'm shoving the wire back down. Now, I want to leave some wire in the box, and we'll tighten this up from the basement a bit. So this is not a bad amount to, to leave in the box. I'll push a little more down. Because we may want to take this apart, or we may have a problem, we have to cut some wire off and re-terminate this if it turns out that we made a mistake in our termination. So I'm just going to wind this up, and again, what you don't want to do is you don't want to bend this stuff too much. You want to be moderately gentle. Here we are back in the basement, and we have a loop of about 8 to 10 foot, which is exactly what we wanted in case of flexibility upstairs. And now what we're going to do is we're going to pull back the slack, but it's very important because as we pull it, these may get tangled, so we may have to run back and forth a couple of times. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back to the other end of the basement and start pulling it. And then I'll have to come run back here as it gets close to make sure that I, I work the kinks out of it. So now that I'm getting close, it's when I kind of have to come up here and work the kinks out so that it goes nicely. So now we pulled up the slack, and so we're pretty much complete all the way up into the room. And now all we have to do is finish connecting it to the communications area. And so I mentioned before that we started in the middle. So first what we've got to do is pull out oh, about 15 or 20 feet. Now this is a place that you don't want to skimp. You don't want to even come close to running out of cable on this, because otherwise you've got to pull it all back out. So cable is cheap, time is expensive. So I'm going to pull quite a bit of cable out of all three cables. And I'm sure we'll be throwing a little bit away off of this. So I think about 20, 25 feet. And I'll probably have to throw away four or five feet off each of these. So then you just cut it. We're going to run it up through the remaining part. I'm going to go across the beam come down, and then come down into our communications cabin. I just start, first I'll put the, the coax in. Now you'll notice even in this communications area I have large loops of wire left. And that's so I might want to move this up or down or over as I finish the basement. So I gave myself a lot of flexibility. I don't want to rerun all these wires every time I change something. So I want to leave a large loop for the cable. Cut that to length. So, so we'll make a loop for the data. This is where having three colors is kind of nice. You just know the blue is the data. If I was using two Cat 5s, I probably would have bought two colors of Cat 5 and spent the extra money so that I knew maybe my green Cat 5 was always my phone and my blue Cat 5 
is my data. So, there. So now, the last thing to do is terminate the data cable so we can plug it into our hub or our router so we can connect it to the rest of the house. And we're going to terminate this a little differently. You can terminate this a lot of ways, spend a lot of money and make a patch panel and terminate it with a patch panel, or you can simply terminate it straight in to plug, it plugs right into your router. Now we're only going to need about a quarter inch of this, but I cut some extra off. Green, and then we unwrap the brown and the brown stripe. And we put the brown stripe in first, and then the brown. So we're taking these and getting them in order. Okay, so when we're all done, we have the pairs untwisted and flattened out from left to right. Orange stripe, orange, green stripe, blue, blue stripe, green, brown, and then brown stripe. So we, it takes a while to get them nice and flat. So now what we're going to do is trim them off, leaving about 3 eighths of an inch of nice flat wires. So that's what it looks like, all trimmed. Now, once you have them nice and flat, you simply work them in, you work them in to the plug and push them in. Right before you're finished, you make sure you can, you can see through this clear plastic and make sure your sequence is right from your orange stripe over to your brown. So you make sure your sequence is right and you make sure that it's all the way in so this little metal teeth will connect right with the wires. Okay, so now we're going to crimp it. So just put it in the crimper, and crimp it down until it clicks. Complete it. If you do it right, take your time. The first one ought to work. They're not that hard to do. So the only thing we have left to do is make some, do some testing now. So now we're back upstairs, and uh, we're going to test this baby out and see what we do. So here we go with the portable. You might want to watch the uh, LED light as we plug it into the Cat 5 jack that we just built. And uh, whoops, lights on. Looks like we have an address. Let's take a look at what we can do here. See if we can't get out to the internet. And lo and behold, sitting in the master bedroom, we're surfing the web. Well, now we're back in the basement. We've terminated our data, we've tested our data, which worked first time, which is great. We've terminated our cable TV. We've terminated our telephone. They're easy. They tested out just fine. So now we are at the communication center. Now, putting everything together is actually a good idea. It's kind of like how a business does it. And in new construction, you have the convenience of doing this. So I've centralized all my communication equipment, wasted perhaps a little more cable, running cable to every location back here, but now I can swap out my hardware. So if I take a look at the hardware we've got right here, we've got a cable modem connects to the home router. The home router is what allows us to plug all these computers into a single connection. It also acts as a firewall for the rest of the house. Then the rest of the house is connected through a 10100 switch, a 10 megabit hub, and then a wireless gateway to allow wireless throughout the house. And so the net result is every plug in the house is always hot and always wired, giving out DHCP addresses, and anywhere in the house you can also do wireless networking. Now I'm sure that you haven't got enough detail to build your own home network from this show. And so what we've provided is a website where we give you much more in-depth detail and articles and specific instructions on how to build your own home network. Hey, why are we here, Chuck? Well, <clears throat> why are we here? Good question. In this video, we're hey. going... No? Uh, we got flexible conduit that simplifies a lot. Telephone, data, and cable TV on the master bathroom. Okay, so now uh, putting conduit in has been a very good choice. Uh, this is really going nowhere. I don't have any idea what I'm talking about. Well, it was all about. great. If you had just closed, you would have been fine.